Right. So welcome to the second part of lesson 10. Uh, in this part, we will look more closely at a particular type of polygon known as quadrilaterals, where your n is equal to number of sides is equal to 4. Okay, so let's start with a common quadrilateral, a rectangle. So rectangle. So rectangle has four sides and each side the angle is 90 degrees. Okay. Opposite sides are equal, so uh, this side and this side would be equal in length and then the top and bottom would be equal in length. So let's see here, let's start 80 degrees. Okay, now if you draw a line segment that connects one vertex, so this a, a point where two sides join is known as a vertex. So a line that you draw from one vertex to the opposite vertex, this line is known as a diagonal. Okay, so you can have these two diagonals. Oops, that's a very bad diagonal. Let me draw it straighter. Okay, so you have two diagonals inside a rectangle. And there's some interesting properties. So the first property is that diagonals of a rectangle are equal in length. Okay. And the second property is that diagonals bisect each other. Bisect each other. So what's meant by bisection? So bisection means that um, uh, the, the diagonals divide each other into equal parts. So, so this part of one diagonal and this part of one diagonal, the length of these two parts, so if I go from here to here and here to here, these line segments will be equal in length. And similarly, this segment and this segment would be equal in length. Okay, so that's what's meant by bisection of diagonals. Okay, now let's look at a special type of rectangle where all sides are equal. So a square. Okay, so a square is simply a rectangle with all sides being equal. Okay, so all the properties of a square are applicable of a rectangle are applicable on a square. So you, all your angles are again 90 degrees. But now all your sides are equal. So everything is equal length. A, A, A. Okay. Again, the diagonals can be drawn. So you can have these two diagonals. Let me draw it with the blue. So you have one diagonal, you have the other diagonal. And this property again applies. So diagonals are equal in length. So Diag, I'm going to shorten it diag, are equal, and the other thing, they bisect. So these properties uh, still apply, so diag bisect each other. Okay. Now the other thing is that the diagonals, they divide the square into 45, 45, 90 triangle, 90 right triangle. So 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree right triangle. So this is, we did this in, in the triangle lesson that a diagonal of a square divides the rectangle into these, right? Okay. Um, and then the length of the diagonal, uh, if you remember, is just the side, which in this case is A root 2. Okay. So these are our rectangles and squares. Next, we'll look at a more general type of a quadrilateral, and that's a parallelogram. So, parallelogram, parallel, parallelogram. Okay. So, parallelogram is a quadrilateral like this. So in a parallelogram, the difference from a rectangle is that the angles are not 90 degrees. Okay? 
and they are not all equal to each other. Only the opposite angles are equal. So this angle and this angle, they are equal. And this angle and this angle, they are equal. And you will see that A and A are acute angles and B, they are, these are obtuse angles. Okay. And the other thing is that these opposite sides are equal. Only the opposite sides. So these two just like in rectangles, right? The opposite sides are equal. And the other important thing is that the opposite sides are also parallel. That, that is an important thing too. In rectangles and squares, they are also parallel. And here too, uh, they are parallel. So opposite sides are parallel. Okay. That's why it's called a parallelogram. <laughs> the parallel is in the uh, name. Okay. Now, what else? Uh, again, if I draw the diagonals here, I draw the diagonals here, but now you'll see that one diagonal is shorter than the other diagonal. Okay, uh, so the diagonals are not equal in a parallelogram, but the diagonals still bisect each other. So, so the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so they're not equal, but they still bisect each other. Okay, cool. Um, next, let's also look at another quadrilateral, which is called a trapezoid. So this is this rarely uh, appears on the GRE. So I would not worry too much about it, but we'll do a very quick uh, review. So a trapezoid has only one pair of uh, parallel sides. Okay, so you see only one pair, this and this. So the top and the base. So actually these two sides are known as the base. Um, these are parallel. So you have one pair of parallel sides. And these are called bases. That's all you need to know about a trapezoid. Okay. Uh, next, we'll talk about areas of parallelogram of, of quadrilaterals in general. So areas. Okay. Uh, so the general formula for area of a quadrilateral is that you have to find its base and times it by height. Okay. So in some cases, this is pretty easy. So like. For a rectangle, if I draw a rectangle, usually the sides of the rectangle are known as length and width. Okay, so length and width basically serve as your base and height for a rectangle, and that gives you a product of that gives you the area. Uh, similarly, for a square. A square has all sides equal, so any side can uh, behave as length and width. So basically, you get S squared. So if you square the side, you get the area of a square. What about a parallelogram? For a parallelogram, it gets slightly trickier because the base and height are not evident. So in a parallelogram, let's say I take this bottom side as the base. So I have my base, okay, whatever the length of that is. Now the height is that you draw from one vertex onto the base an altitude, which makes a 90 degree, okay. This is known as the height and base times h would give you the area. So, so base is always known, but height, to find the height, you need to know other things like the angle, the angles inside the parallelogram, okay. And then um, this formula for you about trapezoid, but I won't worry about that. Okay, so these are all the areas that you need to know as far as quadrilaterals are concerned. Okay, let's do some example problems to make this interesting. Here's the problem. Um, we have a square carpet 
whose side is 10% smaller than the side of a square room. Okay. If the area of the room is 30.24 square feet, what's the length of the side of the carpet? Okay. This is a very typical GRE problem. I would think that at least one question on your actual GRE exam would look like this. So this is an area problem where uh, the sides are different by some percent. Okay. So very typical problem. Um, important thing to realize here is that uh, you have a square carpet. Okay. And the room is also a square room. Okay. So now you know that the area of the room is 30.24. Right. Now it's a square room. Uh, so you have a square room. Let's say the side of each, the length of, uh, of, of the square, length of the side of the square is S, right? So everything is S, S, S. And we know area of a square is going by S square. So I can find by taking the square root of both sides that the length of the room is five and a half, about five and a half feet. Okay. Now this becomes easier because I know that the length of the carpet is 10% smaller than the side of the room. So length of carpet would be 90% since it's 10% smaller so it will be just 90% 0 0.9, 90% will be represented by 0.9 of the side of the square which is 5.5. Okay? And this comes out to be about 4.95. Okay, you can do this on the calculator. You get 4.95. Okay, so so pretty simple. It's a, just a word problem that you have to translate from English to mathematical terms. Okay, so as long as you can understand uh, these different terms and how the percent works, you can easily uh, solve this problem. Again, a very important problem for GRE. All right. Let's look at this problem now. Okay, so we have a figure and there are two questions related to that. Uh, question 14 to 15 refer to the following figure in which M and N are the midpoints of two sides of the square. Okay, M and N are midpoints and we have a square here whose length is 2. Okay, what is the perimeter of the shaded region? So the shaded region here is this. Okay, and they want to find the perimeter. Okay, so perimeter is the sum of all the lengths <coughs> of a site. So you have this trapezoid basically, which is a shaded region, and you want to find the perimeter of that. Uh, let's see. Well, M and N are midpoint. So if this whole side is two, then each side around this midpoint would be one and one. So one and one. Okay, so I have. Uh, I know two sides are one and one of this shaded region to find this one. Okay, so DB is the diagonal and I have a square. So the square's diagonal is always the side length times root 2. So I got 2 root 2 for the <coughs> this side and MN. Okay, how can I find MN? So it's a right triangle. Two sides are one, so I can use Pythagoras term. So I can have one square plus one square equals c square. So then c would come out to be root two. Okay, so the fourth side is root two. I sum this up, I get two plus three root two. Okay, so two root two plus root two. I have two root two, one root two. I get three root twos. Okay, so that's b. Right, pretty simple. Just find the five sides and sum them up. Okay, what is the area of the shaded region? Oh, now we have to find the area. Um, how about we start with this area of the square? So square, I have side two, I square it, I get four, okay? How about I find the area of this triangle, okay? Uh, so let's say this is triangle A. Uh, so triangle A is just, um, so area of a triangle is one half times uh, base times height, right? So base here would be two, height would also be two, right? This is a right triangle again, 
and base and height are just the legs, the two sides <coughs> of the triangle. So it's simply two times two, and I get area of this triangle to be A. Uh, let's find the area of this triangle, and I'm going to call this triangle B. So for this triangle, the area would again is a right triangle, and the two legs of the right triangle are one and one. One and one, so the area comes out to be one half. Okay, so now the area of the shaded region, shaded, would be that I take the area of the square and I subtract out the area of the two triangles. Right? So the square is four, one triangle is two, the other triangle is one half. Four minus two would be two, two minus one half would be one point five. Okay, so one point five plus Right. So, so the deal was that uh, this shaded region's area, you cannot find that right away um, because this is a weird figure, you don't know a formula for that. So you have to find a way around that. So you know the area of the square, you know the area of the two triangles that are being formed. So if you take out these two triangles from the area of the square, you're left with the area of the shaded region. Okay.